My name is Roxy Azari, and we are here on behalf of I, the I Saw the Shadow Initiative, which links artists with international agencies. The three of us are all spoken word artists. Thank you for having us. Hello, my name is Catherine George. Good afternoon, my name is Nkosi Nkulaleka. Today I am 19 and alive. I go to the football field in my village with me other men dancing around a ball, and I too can dance. I've been dancing since birth with these legs and their lyrics. It sounds like music coming from my hips when I groove. Sounds like drums bleeding countless rhythms from the foot. In my dream, the football does a tango with me here. In the real world, me and the ball maneuver around each other's pulse. Some say I should go pro, crawl through the lights and the cameras and the actions and rename myself as a champion, but they don't know that I've already been named that. Don't they know that I've only known my name, only known my home, only known the heat wave and the heartbreak, only known the river with a bag of fish in my country, only known the blood stain, the soldiers saluting the people with rifles, only known the dust seeping in the shoe soul, only known the daily's prayers to that cleanses this soul, only known the night that dances into the day with the body in its mouth, only known this country in all its gore and glory, but I've only seen the gore. I've only known the gore. I left for Europe with a scouting agent, which is to say I was seen for more than my skin. I left for Europe with an empty pocket, which is to say I had nothing left to lose. I left for Europe not knowing the agent wanted more of me, which is to say ego blinds us all. I left for Europe with a man trying to traffic my body, which is to say this world looks at me as something for sale. I left for Europe not thinking, which is to say I was only a dreaming man. I left for Europe with a man without a face, which is to say I followed a false dream. Now these legs have taken me places, places that sometimes I do not always wish to go. I remember how the agent attempted to make my body a product. I remember knowing my own worth. I remember saying no, saying I will not be shaken down, that this body isn't made for earthquakes. I know the kind of music that, my, that makes up my blood and it still plays on through the fire and the falling and the failing. I'm still here, full of success, awarded a scholarship to continue this success, learning how to dance amidst the rhythm that at times break, but I won't. I never will. I have got this. Remember the breathing technique. Remember the rhythm. Breathe in, two, three, out, three, out, breathe in, two, three, out, two. I have got this. Everything is still. My breath a balloon expanding from my diaphragm and I am lifted. All I see is the finish line, breathe in two, three, out two. Running a marathon is what nature looks like when harmonized with euphoria. And that is when the bomb went off. All I heard was the booming noise of what felt like the last day I would ever be able to run again. The earth shook beneath me. The sky looked like a chain smoker's lungs and I was secondhand coughing my way to remembering how to breathe. Two, one, three. You have to make this. You have to. In two, three, out two. There is so much life left in you. Just breathe. What if I don't got this one? All I remember are the sirens. My eyes meeting with the first responder. I don't know what her name was, but she didn't need to know names to know that our lives mattered. She reassured me that they have got me. I can't feel my right leg, but they have got me. While beginning attempting to lift me, I felt the universe whisper to lean back, to allow myself to breathe, that I was in good hands and that they have got me. At the hospital, all I remember feeling is gratitude, like the magnitude of the blast did not affect the speed at which they found us, awed by humility and humanity. The following year, we came back, over 38,000 strong with the sense of community running through our veins. That is where we stretch beyond imagination, even in these stretchers that gave so many of us a second chance to stretch before our next runs. It has been two years 
and I have realized that we can't control what happens, but we can control our reactions. I chose to take my life back, to not let tragedy overshadow human triumph. So many of us continue to run each year, to push our bodies beyond limits. So yes, we are in it to win it, but winning has been redefined, not by finish lines or fastest times, but in our choice to never be resigned to continue chasing our dreams in the face of adversity. It's our community's choice to be resilient, to stand strong despite threats. The decision we make in our heads to endure. The pure choice to just trust that there are a team of dedicated people that have got us. So yes, every year I, along with this inspiring community, continue to prepare for our next run. Because at the end of every race, we have only just begun. Here in the favelas, people are ornaments in magazines. Here, visitors come to fall in love with the rhythm of a city that is different from theirs. Within the flurry of excitement, there's always possibility for opportunity. I am stopped by a woman who says I am beautiful, who says the world would stop if it looked in my eyes long enough. She asks who I live with. I tell her it is only a starving mother and daughter, says she might have a job for me, says she might be able to help me out, says she might give me a job at the World Cup. When I'm there, the people look at me like I am another breed, and it is because I am. I am favela bred, all high talk and samba, and they love this about me the most. It has been three years since I've been employed. I show them my town. I tell them about the importance of technology and how a push of a button can save a favela girl like me. I tell them about this app called Save the Dream, how this app is used to report sex trafficking, how this app is used to report child labor. I tell them it's in our hands. It's in our hands to work together, to protect our community. It's in our hands to change the course of someone's life. In their eyes, there is amazement. In their eyes, there is awareness. In their hands, there is technology. The thank you sounds like the most honest poem. My thank you is just as honest as my mother's when she has finished a full meal. With each new opportunity I receive, my mother becomes healthier. Women like me become healthier. I have seen us transform into the strongest steel. We are healthy, happy, unyielding, just like the world that raised us. There are women and girls around the globe who will only know opportunity and salvation because of this app. There are mothers, daughters, sisters, cousins who will have the opportunity to love unapologetically, loudly. We will bellow our song of survival, of endurance, and joy as if it were the only song we've ever known. Thank you. Thank you.